Hi guys, I'm Dr. Priestess and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the four side effects that I unfortunately experienced from taking oral minoxidil for hair loss and why I will be there for stopping oral minoxidil as part of my hair loss protocol. This video follows up from my previous video where I talk about a new side effect that I haven't seen before in any other patient um, from taking 2.5 milligrams of oral minoxidil daily to combat hair loss. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the first side effect that I actually noticed. And this first side effect that I noticed was back hair. Now, normally I don't get any back hair, but I noticed that there were some hairs growing in the back area about two weeks into treatment. There was actually one instance where I noticed a singular long black hair on my back, which has never happened before. And I can probably assume um, is, is because of the oral minoxidil messing with or prolonging the anagen phase, which is the growing phase of that particular back hair. Obviously wasn't a biggest fan of this one, but it wasn't something that I couldn't deal with. Um, it wasn't particularly bad. The second side effect is the um, side effect that I mentioned in my previous video, which is a facial rash. I was unfortunate enough to get a facial rash from taking oral minoxidil. Now I actually, upon further investigation and from talking to some of my um, doctor colleagues, we kind of came to the conclusion that this is likely a autoimmune rash. Um, I myself am quite an allergic individual. I'm quite prone to allergies. I'm quite hyperallergenic in other words. I developed what, what, what's called a butterfly rash. A butterfly rash is seen in some rare conditions such as systemic lupus erythematosus or lupus for short. It occurs because the immune system actually attacks the blood vessels in the face. It attacks those blood vessels and causes inflammation and that's why that's seen as what looks like just some spots or some acne. Now I'm likely to be okay with the idea of a few spots on the face for you know better hair growth um, but it's the idea that the immune system can also attack the internal blood vessels that is much more scary and therefore risk my own health. And to be honest with you, out of the four side effects that I plan to talk about, this side effect is the biggest reason why I've stopped taking oral minoxidil. I actually plan on reporting this side effect to the UK Medicines Regulatory, which is a body that um, anyone can inform about new side effects that they've experienced with any medications. This is to help others who possibly experience something similar to myself. Unfortunately, my facial rash hasn't actually gone. Now, since I've stopped taking oral minoxidil, it hasn't got any worse, but it hasn't actually gone. It hasn't, it's still there. As you can see in this video, there's still some spots that I didn't have before. I'm not someone who's overly prone to acne. Um, I was when I was a teenager, but not anymore. And so I might need to look for treatment for this. The third side effect that I want to tell you about is that I noticed my face getting puffier. I first noticed this about one month into treatment. I just felt like my face had become slightly wider and less defined and I hadn't made any changes to my diet really and that was as early as one month into treatment. So again, not something that's ideal. Now this seems like something that is much more common amongst people who have tried oral minoxidil compared to the facial rash and so might be something that you want to consider before you start taking oral minoxidil. The fourth side effect that I noticed with oral minoxidil was palpitations. Now, up until a week ago, I'd been taking my oral minoxidil doses in the evening just before bed. Alongside taking my finasteride, I would have my oral minoxidil. And so because I'd quite quickly go to sleep, I didn't notice any palpitations. Even if I got palpitations, I was sleeping, so I wasn't able to notice them. However, a week ago when I was doing night shifts in the hospital, I noticed that once I took my oral minoxidil, a couple of hours afterwards, I was getting three to four episodes of palpitations over the six hours after I'd taken the dose. I did a little mini experiment where the next night I decided not to take the oral minoxidil and I didn't have any palpitations. The night after that, I did take oral minoxidil and I had palpitations again. Of course, this is very poor scientific research, but it is something that I have noticed and I've seen others notice it as well. So uh, for these reasons, I will be stopping oral minoxidil. It pains me to say this because I do feel like oral minoxidil has boosted my hair. I feel like my hair looks healthier, it's growing faster, and there is some improved density in some areas. I thought that reducing my dose from 2.5 to 1.25 would get rid of those side effects, 
but it really hasn't. And so I've decided to stop it until further notice. Now, what should you do with this information? The first thing I want you to understand is that this is not reputable scientific research since it's only one person's personal experience with oral minoxidil. The second thing I want you to understand is that not everyone is prone to the same side effects with oral minoxidil or with any medication, in fact. And so there are a lot of patients that I know that are taking oral minoxidil without any problems at all. The last thing I want you to bear in mind is that I want you to use this information to make a more informed decision about whether you should start oral minoxidil or not, while we wait for actual scientific information to come about the safety of oral minoxidil for hair loss. I always want you to consult your own doctor about starting any new medication that includes oral minoxidil, but I hope that this gives you a little bit more of an idea of what I have experienced and possibly therefore what you might expect from taking oral minoxidil. If you're thinking about taking oral minoxidil and you want further, more detailed, more specific, more personalized advice, shoot me an email at drpriestess at gmail.com and there we can talk about your current stage of hair loss, your hair loss journey from start to finish, your current medications, uh, whether you'd be a candidate for oral minoxidil um, and whether you might be a candidate for hair transplant surgery as well. So don't hesitate to shoot me an email there and we can arrange a consultation as soon as you'd like. Thank you guys for watching.